All right, so this is our favorite 2 3 uniform. She's a Cessna 172, and it's an airplane, but guess what? I can't fly it in the air right now because it's not legal to fly. It's literally $5 of paperwork that's preventing me from flying this thing, and it's extremely frustrating. I may be smiling here, maybe because the situation is just so stupid that it, it's really hard to explain, but 2 3 uniform can't fly right now. I'm gonna take you guys through, explain why, explain the situation, explain how if you get yourself in this situation, you can find a way to get yourself out of it, and just talk about some other snafus that can happen with airplane ownership or paperwork, even if you don't own an airplane, and how we as pilots can be careful and protect ourselves. So let's figure out why this airplane is stuck in the hangar. Okay, for those of you that are new to the channel, which there will be some of you, this is a 172. It is a 1963-172 that I used for my flight school. I've gone through the process of updating it. I'm really diligent about keeping her airworthy, keeping her flying, keeping her in nice shape. And yeah, we're in a bit of a mess because now I can't fly this airplane. I have an issue with registration. So those of you that know, those of you that are pilots, we have something called Aero that we need to do for documents. We have our airworthiness certificate, we have our registration, a radio license in some places, that's not so much a thing anymore, operator's handbook or POH, and then weight and balance. All of those things have to be on the airplane, they have to be legal. Now the airworthiness, for example, stays airworthy so long as you are keeping the aircraft in an airworthy state. And that gets a little bit more into the maintenance things behind aviation, things like your annual, your ADs, your 100 hour, and that's gonna come up a little bit later too. So that's the, the A. However, I'm having a problem with registration. So here's the quick story, if I can, just really fast, tell you why 2-3 Uniform can't fly right now. It's kind of interesting, and I don't want you to get yourself into the same situation. Let's just step outside the hangar for some fresh air so I don't freak out too much. Okay, we're walking down hangar row here. So when I bought 2-3 Uniform, I had to transfer over the registration to my name. You go through this process of getting the bill of sale, and then you send that into the FAA, put it under a new name, et cetera, et cetera. When I did the new registration, I put it under an LLC just to protect myself a little bit more. So on this paperwork about the registration, it said that it, they wanted more information about the LLC. So it also said, if you have questions, call this number. Of course, the language is kind of ambiguous. You don't know what's going on. So I call the number and they say, hey, we're too busy right now. We cannot take your call. We need you to send us an email. All right, so they're already too busy to handle things. So I send uh, an email and I never hear back. It's, it's like 10 months and I still haven't heard back. I send another email and you know, still don't hear back from that one. We got someone taxing by, by the way, kind of cool. And I'm just a creepo out here pacing around. So then I go on vacation and I come back. I have a nasty gram from the FAA. It says, your airplane will be deregistered in 60 days if you don't respond to us. Basically means, to my understanding, that the end number 2423 uniform will no longer be an end number. It'll no longer be in the system and could kind of be up for grabs if someone were to want to do that because of the lack of getting the registration done. The FAA knows that they are behind. They know that this is an issue. In fact, recently they extended registrations from three years to seven years, but that still doesn't take care of the situation where you would transfer ownership from one person to another. Also, they know that they're so busy that they give you some grace period. You have up to 12 months from your application time to allow them to process the paperwork and all those things. So we had simply gone to the point where that 12 months was over and they wanted the real deal. Now, I like to take personal accountability. And so, of course, I blame myself for not being more forthright or, or like really pushy about getting the situation resolved and making sure that I had the registration in hand. 
I just thought the FAA was so far behind that there was really nothing I could do but wait, especially since they couldn't answer the phone and they, I heard that they were way backed up with email. So I was just patiently waiting. I was still legal to fly the airplane. That temporary, not temporary, but you know, my application, they said it was okay to do that. But now I'm in this limbo land where I'm not allowed to fly the airplane. And so I went through this process when I got back from vacation, got that nasty gram. I found out that there are literally businesses that exists in Oklahoma City where FAA headquarters is that put up shop right next to the FAA registry office and they literally walk over the paperwork like four times a day and handle these registration issues. So it was a very low fee of like $60. I did it right away. I overnighted some paperwork there. They knew everything to do with the LLC sort of stuff and we had that off to the races. So that wasn't a problem. But now my registration is in this in question category where even though I've put in the new information, I can't fly. There's no way to expedite it like you would a passport. There's no way to talk to anyone to, to get a rush through. There's nothing you can do. You literally just have to wait. By the way, that's them shooting off fireworks at the Eagles near the runway. That's the big poppy here. So I'm literally up a creek without a paddle or rather at a hangar with an airplane that can't fly. And it's very frustrating. You just get in line, it's gonna take about three weeks to resolve. So I went through everything to try to figure out how to get this to happen faster. I contacted our local FISDO, which is the local FAA authorities that are on the ground that could kind of help out with stuff like this, uh, if they can help out. They couldn't do anything because it, it's up to the registration office. They can't do a thing. You can't do a ferry permit, for example, or anything like that to fly the airplane. I did end up calling the registration office, talk to someone. You can imagine that they were not helpful at all, couldn't do anything. All they can do is pull it up on their computer and see that I actually submitted the paperwork via that other organization. And so one of my last ditch efforts here was to contact a new service that I just started, which is Pilot Protection Services from AOPA. Of course, many of you have probably heard of AOPA before. They are an advocacy organization, a lobbying organization that keeps the freedoms of flying for us here in the US. So they work very tightly with Congress to make sure that we keep flying, that uh, things don't get in the way of us pilots flying. For example, AOPA was integral in making sure that basic med recently went through, which allows more pilots to fly medically, which I'm a huge supporter of, by the way. I think that any chance we can get to get the FAA out of the way and deregulate this flying thing, the better. So I ended up signing up for Pilot Protection Services and they go above and beyond. So it's like this team on your side of literal aviation lawyers and you get so much lawyer time each year by signing up where when you get in a sticky situation like this, you can contact them, get educated, even get help. They will even go to court with you if you get in a situation like that. I'm kind of like Trent Palmer recently with his debacle. So there's just a lot of help they can offer. Now here's the mistake I made with Pilot Protection Services. I didn't go to them or didn't have them signed up when I first started this process. I should have called Pilot Protection Services the second that I got that first letter about the registry from the FAA. I'm talking about the one about the LLC stuff over a year ago. So that's when I should have contacted them and got the help I needed because they could have cleared it up super quick and there's things that we could actually do. It was really cool because I ended up getting on the phone with one of the lawyers from AOPA. His name was Jeremy and walked him through the process, told him what was going on, told him everything I had done. And he basically said, you know, there's unfortunately in this situation, as you said, there's nothing you can do because the registration office just has to process it now. And so that's where we're at. By the way, this is really random, but imagine being in another sticky situation where something like this happens to your airplane you're in an accident or something and you need to get some advice, you know, a first time thing, get some advice on what to do. And I know this guy, he's okay. Everyone's okay for privacy reasons. I'll keep the tail number out. Won't show you what happened, but they were okay. A fuel issue. They were on floats. Couldn't quite make it back to the lake, but yeah, they are good. So it just got me thinking that we as pilots, we have all these things we have to keep track of. You know, as an aircraft owner, obviously I've got to keep track of all of these documents that need to be done. I need to be the one 
as the owner operator that takes care of all the maintenance and things. Now, as pilots, no matter who you are, if you're flying an airplane, you do have to ensure all this stuff is correctly done before you get in an airplane and fly. Like you're supposed to make sure that those aero documents are done, that your AVIATE is what I call them. That's the acronym I use in our ground school. The AVA acronym for your maintenance stuff, all that is done. And so you have to be really careful to make sure that every step of the way you are legal to fly. Because there's that little part of us that says, oh, you know, what's the harm? It's a $5 piece of paper. Why can't I just take the airplane and go fly? Why can't I just go? But if you were to do that, if you were to go flying, A, that's not a very awesome safety mindset, first of all. A definitely a hazardous attitude being anti-authority. But if you were to wreck the airplane, uh, just like an example I just showed you, and they were to find one of your documents out of order, then it could null and void your insurance. So imagine going through a situation like that where you have a situation like an incident or an accident and then they don't pay out. You're, you're screwed because you decided to break the rules. So, so that's just not the kind of pilot I am. I wanna make sure that A, just as me, a pilot here by myself, that I keep the rules even when no one is looking. But apart from that, I do have a responsibility to the community too because I do a lot of things publicly that I don't do something like that that puts my reputation or the legality of the way I fly in question. And so I'm trying to be very careful with things like that apart from just that's my attitude for safety anyway and just making sure that I, I stay on the up and up. So let me show you where these documents usually go. They'll be in the airplane on display somewhere. And in my airplane, they're down here on the left. So you can see right here. And down there, I have the airworthiness and the registration. That application is tucked behind here. So that's the paper, original paper, from the application that I had. Of course, it's not legal right now, so that means nothing. And then I've got the other documents over there, the operator handbook and the weight and balance. Of course, here we're the nest right up front there. So that is the situation. And what's interesting is that this timing is really perfect because I just signed on to be an ambassador with AOPA for their pilot protection services. And right when I had done so, this situation popped up where I really truly needed it and I needed help and I needed to get out of this situation or at least try to get out of the situation that I'm in. So this is really cool news and, and maybe where some of this pressure was coming from. I'm putting an autopilot in this airplane. It's going to be a Garmin autopilot. And when we had done the panel, it was already cut out of the panel. So I'll show that to you guys now too. But I need to get this airplane to the installer to install this. I wanted to do it while I went to Sun and Fun. But now I can't do that because I'm waiting on the registration. It's just throwing off all these plans and... I've exhausted every avenue I could. So at this point, it kind of is what it is. And let's see if we can see here, that autopilot will go right back here. There's a cutout in the panel. You can kind of see there, barely. And that's where the autopilot will go. And when we did the autopilot, we also did all of the controls on the yoke as well, in addition to putting some wiring in the floor. So this thing is ready to go. It's hot and ready for that autopilot. I'm excited about that. And that gets us into a TAA aircraft. So for those of you that aren't super familiar with aviation or you're just getting started or you're a private pilot and you feel like you just barely got through the process of you know, the regulations you were dealing with. So let's say you even get into a situation where you were like me, your registration had expired and you discovered that you had been flying with an expired registration. Pilot protection services would be the perfect place to call. What if you have a medical situation and you're not sure what to do before you get the paperwork started with the FAA or what it's gonna be like to go through that medical process Again, pilot protection services. So as I've gone through this process of having a perfectly good airplane that I wish I could fly, I am reminded that I need people on my side to keep doing this and pilot protection services, AOPA, of course, just by default, but specifically pilot protection services is huge for me right now. I am extremely busy keeping this flight school going, keeping angle of attack going, getting you guys more videos and it might seem like all this glamour and fun and cool. There's definitely plenty of the good stuff, 
But behind the scenes, it's expensive. It's arduous. It's lots of paperwork. It's lots of time to just keep this train rolling. So I need more people on my side. Really happy to have Pilot Protection Services there. Honestly, like seriously, if you have issues, go to them first. If you have questions, go to them first and have the conversations before you start paperwork or before you make a mistake or something like that. Or if you feel like you're in limbo with something like I was, go to them first. Super, super, super important. It's only, you know, $100 more per year to get those services, which is a, a you know, a drop in the bucket with what we spend on aviation. And I know for those of you that are just affording to get your hours and you're, you're kind of struggling to get hour after hour, that seems like a lot, but there's just so many gotchas and you don't want to be in a position where you've put in all this time and effort and, and then this medical thing pops up or a paperwork thing or a maintenance thing, just making sure that you can get through, get through this unscathed. And I'm lucky enough that, you know, I, I've been through this a time or two with ownership and, and little things that crop up. And so I knew like I needed to handle it and I needed to stop. But anyway, pilot protection services. There is a link. It's a special link for angle of attack followers. Go down there, click that, go check them out. I'm on the top tier because I'm not messing around anymore. I need help. And they're going to be the first people I go to when I have those questions and need that help. They've got lots of helpful people at AOPA that are there to answer your questions. If it gets to a deeper situation where you need to set up a meeting with a lawyer, you can do that. And so go check things out. Really, seriously, it's really something special and something we need more of in aviation. So I'm really passionate about this right now. As you can see, I'm stuck in this nice hangar with an airplane that should not be in here. It should be outside flying and it is what it is. I've just got to wait it out. So as I'm wrapping up here, be on the lookout for more videos regarding pilot protection services. It's going to be an educational series on some of these paperwork things I've been talking about, like the aero documents can get more in depth on that. Keeping your recency of experience, the maintenance stuff you have to do for airplanes, and a bunch of compliance things mostly, and, and, and just things that you got to keep straight in aviation, uh, an educational series there that is sponsored by Pilot Protection Services. So thanks for coming. Thanks for listening to my rant. A lot of you have been asking why I can't fly 2-3 in a form right now. That is why I hope to be back in the sky soon and hope to be back with an autopilot. So it's just around the corner, but we'll get there. So thanks for being here. Make sure to like this video if you liked it. Of course, subscribe to stick around if this has been helpful for you. We have more of these helpful videos coming out. And then go down to the description and go check out Pilot Protection Services. Tell them we sent you huge, huge, huge help for pilots, you directly to keep flying. So thanks for being here. Fly safe, fly legally. And until next time, throttle on.